What's up? Welcome back. We're here with uh, Curtis, man. What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? Hey, man. So. Thanks for coming out today. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, you want to learn about guns, man? Yes, sir. I do. So, have you ever shot anything? I have, but it was a long, long time ago. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you got some experience, so that's good. Yes, sir. That's good. You know, don't, they just don't get up and go crazy by themselves, right? It's, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> it, it takes a it takes a human, uh, but they can be a lot of fun. We're gonna have some fun today. So, um. I think the first thing, um, you know, you were talking a little bit earlier. You kind of want to learn a little bit about everything, right? Yes, sir. So it might take several trips out here, which I'm okay with. All right. So just so you know. Yes, sir. Just so you know. Um, yeah, you were talking about, as we were talking, that you didn't understand what we were talking about. That exactly. Some of the gods, you said, yeah, man, those look crazy. They look like video games. Yes. That's what makes it fun, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Right? So, um I guess we'll start with uh, probably personal protection, right? That's that's the most important thing. Yes, sir. Uh, for me, uh, you're talking about eye pro and ear pro, obviously. You know, God gave us two eyes, two ears. That's all we get. We screw them up, we don't, right? Yes, sir. So got to protect them. For me, even if I'm hunting or something like that, and there are people out there that, that don't subscribe to this, but... If I'm hunting, even uh, I like to wear, you know, some type of electronic ear pro. I mean, first of all, you're protecting your ears, but second of all, I don't know if you've ever had a pair of these or, or no, put anything on. And uh, I'll let you try them out here in a second just to see, but they sort of amplify the noise around you too. And so, what's cool about this is when you're in the woods hunting, you know, mm -hmm. all the squirrels and the deer and stuff like that, it gives you super hearing, man. You know what I mean? Put those on, and you'll see what I'm. You'll see what I'm saying. See how the uh, everything is amplified? Oh, yeah. And then if I do that, probably they cut out. So when the gunshot happens, right, the gun report happens, they'll muffle that real quick so you know, it don't mess with your ears. And they also make the plug style with electronics in it as well. So yes, sir. Uh, you take those off if you want. <laughs> now, the drawback to this style, this is what they call over the ear, right? It goes over the ear. This is what they call in the ear. It was in the ear. So the drawback to this is they're bulky. So they clamp on your head. You know, you probably felt that pressure. Mm -hmm. They can get hot, especially in Texas in 100 degree heat. <laughs> yes, you know, there, there's a lot of drawbacks to these, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to wear these today because I'm not going to be doing any shooting. But what I'm going to recommend you wear is the plug style. Right. Now, one of the perks of, uh, to this, too, is that they these muffle more noise. And it makes sense if you think about it. They're covering the whole ear, right? Kind of like you probably seen like the Bose noise canceling headphones, right? Yes, sir. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So same same principle. It covers everything. Uh, so these better hearing protection, but the plugs, man, they're easier. And then when you and you'll notice a little later when we get into some of these rifles and the shotguns, when you get that stock up there, when you've got this in the way, it, man, it really. You can't really get on target. You can't get a good sight picture and look down there, right? Because you got all this bulk on your ear, right? Yes, so that's why I prefer, I prefer these for the most part. Okay. And then you got iPro, man. And iPro comes in a lot of different forms. These are just standard clears. Uh, you can see I've got, obviously, the Hunter's AC Gold Yellows. Um, and I got multiple pair of these. But uh, these are just the uh, just the standard clear. Put those on. See if they fit. Hopefully, they'll fit for you today. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna wear those today, and if we can get into these, now the trick there's a trick to these, and the first trick is to get them unwrapped. <laughs> uh, second trick is uh, getting them in your ear. Let's see if we can get them. Uh, let's see, that's ah, just got a knot. That's kind of nifty the way they package that. Mm -hmm. All right. You ever put these in before? I want to say I, for like a I want to say a work site. Yeah. But yeah, that's, so yeah. the best way is to twist that into a point. And I'm not gonna do it too much because you know you don't want my nasty fingers in your ear. But <laughs> twist that, and then one of the best ways is to come around with the opposite hand and put them in. All right. And uh, don't just put those around your neck. We'll put those in. Uh, we'll put those in when we go to shoot. So. Uh yeah, and these are yours, man. I want you to keep. 
the the glasses and the ear pro i mean you don't have any right no sir okay there you go cool so if you you go out shooting with somebody else or whatever you've got your own stuff now man you don't even have to worry about it before we shoot let's uh let's talk a little bit about about safety about safety rules because two things you know right up front we discussed the safety gear so we've got all those bases covered um the way I like to explain this, I always explain it, is that remember remember the word of the name MAT, M-A-T, right? Muzzle, action, trigger, okay? So what that means is the muzzle is the end that the business comes out of, right? The muzzle end, right? Muzzle always in a safe direction, right? Yes, sir. So then you've got action. So we talked about earlier, he's like, oh, I don't know lever action or bolt action. It's how it operates. So typically the area where the bullet goes in, where it feeds in, mm -hmm. is considered the action, right? Okay. And that's how it operates is whether or not it operates with a lever or whether it operates with a bolt or whether it's semi-auto where it moves by itself or you have like a revolver, you have, you know, you may have to cock it first or you know, there's all types of actions, right? They can get complex, and that's something that, man, this would be a six-hour video if we talk about all this. <laughs> but there's all kind of actions, and uh, there's, there's a place in the world for all of them, quite honestly. You'll find things you like. You'll find things you don't like. That's all, that's all going to be uh, the thing. But biggest thing is actions open and clear, and you can see everything on the table. The actions open and clear, right? You can mm -hmm. look in there. There's no magazine. We know, whoops, we know that that's safe, right? So... Uh, third thing, and I seen you were doing it was finger off the trigger, like you intuitively was was when you was holding things was. So I always say finger gun. Remember your finger gun, and when you go in, no matter what it is, even if this one's over here, when you go in to pick it up, just remember finger gun, right? Just you know, and it's pretty easy uh, to get that. So the cool thing about those three safety rules is any one of those, and you're not going to have a bad day. Right now, don't get me wrong. Uh, if my muzzle, if my muzzle's in a safe, maybe in a safe place as far as doing damage to anything, uh, it's probably still going to scare me if I got my finger on the trigger and it was loaded or if it was whatever. Right. Yes, sir. But just following any one of those three things, right? Muzzle in a safe direction, action open and clear. It can't, it can't, you can't damage anything if you're not pointing at anything. Right. Right. You can't damage anything if, if it ain't loaded. And you can't damage anything if you don't put your finger on the trigger, right? Yes, sir. And so just one of those, if you follow just one, you're going to have, like, near zero problems. If you follow all three, yeah, it ain't, it ain't going to happen, right? Yes, and sir. sometimes you forget one, and that's the beauty of it. I was at an event a couple of weeks ago, and I had a malfunction. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't a negligence thing. But uh, thankfully, I mean, it went off, and my finger wasn't on the trigger because the, the handgun it messed up i had to send it back actually and but i was down range i had it pointed down range it was in a safe direction right when it went off did it scare me yeah it scared me because it <laughs> went off my finger wasn't even on the trigger but it was a safe direct everything was cool right like it was good and i was like oh crap what happened you know and i got to looking and i'm like oh, okay this thing's got it's, it's broke yeah. like, it's dangerous we got to get this fixed so uh yeah following those safety rules i think are uh are important and you'll just, it'll get ingrained, you know, like I said, you already do the trigger thing and it's common sense. Now, are there times when certain safety rules you cannot follow? What if you had to clean that, right? Well, obviously, if you've got to clean this, uh, the action's pretty much going to be open and clear because you're not going to clean a loaded gun. It don't work like that. I mean, you physically can't clean a loaded gun, right? right. Uh, your finger probably is not going to be on the trigger while you're cleaning the gun, but that muzzle may or may not be in a safe direction. Right now we're filming <laughs> and the muzzle is not necessarily in a safe direction, right? But uh, everything, again, no fingers are on the trigger and everything's open and clear. So, you know, we know that we're good to go. Another thing I would advise, you know, once you get into it uh, and you are cleaning and maintaining things uh, and we're not following those rules here, but, uh, no ammunition. Whenever you go to clean or you need to do maintenance or something on your firearm, man, just don't even have any ammunition in the room. You know, just just get it get it away. Um, and the other thing is always, always, always check. 
So if I take this thing right here and, and I do this, I drop the hammer, you know, and we're, we're talking and I hand this to you. Always check it. Always, always. You walk in, you pick up one of the actions closed like that. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just pick it up and go, yeah, okay, it's clear. Always, always check it, right? For yourself. Know for yourself that it's clear, right? And you see I'm working these and I'm not talking to you. And I'm not, there's a lot of manipulation in buttons and switches, but uh, don't get intimidated by that. That's all I'm saying. All right. uh, every firearm works a little different and, and we're going to work our way through it. So uh, questions on safety, that part of it. Do you have any? Not, not at the time being. I mean, I okay. know, you know, we got to keep the muzzle down and make sure this is clear and make sure our finger not, not necessarily clear. down, but just make sure it's in a safe direction. You know, right. yeah, yeah. Sometimes up is better. Uh, you know, sometimes you might need to go to the side, you know, something like that. Uh, yeah, just make sure you're not pointing it in anything. Uh, but if the, and again, if the if the action, if your fingers off the trigger and the action's open and clear, the muzzle direction is is the least of your worries, honestly, because you know it's not. You can see clearly it's not loaded. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's take a look at some of the stuff we got here. Just kind of talk about it first, because I know you're I know you're curious. <laughs> So we'll kind of go in the order of what I was thinking. I have you, I have you shoot things today, right? We'll kind of start out easy and kind of ramp it up into the more, um, I don't know. I don't want to say scary because it's not scary, but intimidating maybe, especially for like first time. But you're a big dude. You ain't gonna have no problems. You get into the shotguns, dude. You're gonna be able to saw down. You ain't gonna have no issues. Um, so start out with this one right here. This is this is pretty new. I hadn't had this one long right here. Uh, this is the uh, Strybog. Uh, TR-22, so 22. You've heard of a 22, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of small, kind of, kind of. Uh, now, it still can be dangerous. It's all get out. It's definitely not a pellet rifle or anything like that. Uh, but that is, uh, the 22s are kind of the fun guns, you know. Wouldn't recommend that for home defense or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we got the, uh, the little uh, pistol caliber carbine here. We've got a couple other options. We've got a semi-auto. This is a Hammerly 1911. Have you heard of a 1911? Yes, sir. Probably recognize the style and everything else. Yeah. So this is a little 1911, also in 22. I'll let you uh, just kind of bottle that and feel. You can see everything's open. The actions are clear, all that good stuff. So all metal, right? Yes, sir. We don't have much out here that's plastic. And then we got a revolver. I was talking about revolver, but... That's a 10 shot. That's a Smith and Wesson 617. And uh, so we'll take a we'll take a look at that one. Uh, and then we got a couple nine millimeter handguns. This is the Gerson High Power right here, and it does have the red dot, the optic on it. Ooh. So that one's gonna be nine millimeter. You can tell it's all metal. Mm -hmm. uh, like pretty much everything we've seen so far. Then we got the Kiger 9C Pro, the Anderson Kiger 9C Pro. Also got a red dot, got a flashlight. I know you were talking about something for the house earlier that maybe you were looking for something like that. Yes, sir. Whether it's carry or honestly even the house, uh, man, I can't I can't talk enough good about this little thing. This little thing is pretty doggone awesome. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna enjoy that one when we get to it. Mm -hmm. And then we get up into well, let's look at the nine millimeter right quick. So we've got tell the difference between a nine millimeter and a 22 but there's your nine millimeter now the little part on the end i don't know what you know about ammo right mm -hmm. but if you turn this one over to the end see the little round thing in the middle yes sir so you got a pin that strikes that when you pull the trigger which ignites the powder which then sends this part down the barrel and out so you see a lot of stuff on tv like all anti-gun people or whatever don't know what they're talking about usually and uh, they think this whole thing comes out the barrel. And so they go, oh, it's a big, huge bullet. And it's like, no, like this little part's all that comes out, not the whole thing, you know. So it's important to kind of know how it works. The 22 works a little different. You've got the powder, obviously, you've got the, the bullet on the end of the projectile, but notice you don't have a, a circle. This is what they call a rim fire. This is what they call a center fire because it hits in the center, right? So guess where that one hits? If that's a rim fire. Guess. In the back, no, in the rim, right? It hits on the oh, side, on the rim, not okay. in the center, like that one. So, so yeah, and there's quite a few different rim fires as well. Uh, moving up, this one right here is nine millimeter, believe it or not. 
uh, in a in a rifle configuration. So pick that dude up, kind of kind of look down and and uh, check it out. So it's kind of neat to have you know something like a uh, a rifle in a nine millimeter, uh, and then if I can reach down here, this one is the uh, this one is the AR fifteen. So this one's actually the BAR fifteen from Bursa, but you hear a lot about the AR fifteens, and that is the five five six right there. So we'll take a look at the bullet. That one shoots real quick here. Oh, obviously the magazine's over there, but. And you know they talk about them. Sure, you probably heard it, kind of like the nine millimeter. How that five, five, six in the AR is so devastating. Look how little that. Does that look devastating? <laughs> now I don't want to get shot with it. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. And that'll definitely take down a deer and other things. But it's not the big, huge honking, you know, war machine that people seem to think that it is. Uh, yeah, once you kind of see that. But again. I think when people that don't know any better, they pick this up and they think that whole thing comes out the barrel. Mm -hmm. And if that whole thing was coming out the barrel, that'd be a lot scarier than just that little piece <laughs> right there. Uh, so let me grab a couple. Grab that over there right quick because that's the shotgun we were talking about. That's the 12 gauge. Now these are different because these are shot shells. So mm -hmm. notice that the shell is plastic. Still has powder inside and has all the shot that comes out. It's multiple bbs right that comes out mm -hmm. i think this is not this is number four shot so we won't get into all of that as far <laughs> as uh the shot but uh basically the number of shot is how big or small the bbs in there are basically how it works so you know, you've got bird shots you got buck shot obviously if you're going to go deer hunting or something like that you probably want buck shot right for mm -hmm. home defense or something if you were going to use a shotgun probably want buck shot probably don't want to use bird shot but it's you know you can see a center fire so very similar mechanics it's just multiple things are coming out the end of the barrel with that and that's going to have a little bit of thought when you pull the trigger it's not going to be that bad like i said you're, you're a big dude i don't think you're going to have a problem uh, but i've got a couple back here just hang tight uh first is going to be this one this is the remington 870 so this is a pump shotgun mm -hmm. if i can work it there so Mm -hmm. And a lot of people choose like a pump shotgun for their, you know, their home defense use. And obviously for hunting and stuff like that works well too, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so that's a pump. Whoa, that's a pump. You got to pump it every single time. And then here we've got the uh, Remington 1100. So right there. Mm -hmm. And so the Remington 1100 is semi-auto. So you don't have to pump it, right? You just load her up and you just pull the trigger. So it's kind of like the AR-15s and the other things here on the table. Oh. Just in a, in a shotgun package, right? Any questions so far about what we looked at? Um, Honestly, okay. So I know I was thinking more so of a handgun as far as what I was looking for for the time being. Uh -huh. So I was wondering, like, which one would you say have, like, I guess, less recoil to it probably you're probably going to be okay with a most people go nine millimeter i think you're going to be okay going nine millimeter there's a lot of a lot of advantages i could say you know you could go 22 i mean not optimal but you know again nobody wants to get shot with any of this stuff right right so from a defensive situation probably gonna work right uh, so you want to find something that obviously is affordable for you, is comfortable, that you, you, know, you enjoy shooting so that you train and practice and stuff like that with. Um, but I'd say typically 9 millimeter. I mean, that's the reason that you see a lot of it. Uh, ammunition is easy to come by. It's usually everywhere. It's not terribly expensive, the ammunition on it. You've got a large variety of firearms, too, in, in 9 millimeter. I mean, you can see the range here. We've got... You know, from all metal to plastic to, to in a rifle, you know, you can do that in nine millimeter. Um, so I don't think that's a bad start. I know you talked about, you know, where you live too. Uh, safe storage is going to be an important thing. And so with uh, a uh, handgun, you're going to be able to get a, you know, a little small, like portable safe uh now you want to tether that with a they usually come with a cable so you can like put them around something solid or that don't move right yes sir uh that way nobody can just 
I mean, a safe doesn't do you no good if somebody can pick it up and tow it off, right? So, <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, with a handgun, you can get, I mean, well under a hundred bucks, you can get a little personal storage device to put that handgun in. Where with like a long gun, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need a locker, uh, some type of locker. And it's obviously, it's going to have to be longer, you know, not necessarily wider if you've only got one or two. You can get a two or three gun probably. Um, for probably not much more than a hundred bucks, you can get something like that, but you're taking up a lot more room, right? I know you were talking about in the vehicle. If you had a little personal thing, you could move that from the house to the vehicle. Well, the time comes, I mean, uh, first thing is to kind of pull some triggers and figure out what you'd like. I mean, you might figure out, Hey, I like the size of this, mm -hmm. uh, but I really like the, the, the power and the, and everything of, of these. And that's something we can talk about later on. Once we pull some triggers here is, is, you know, you may think you want a handgun, but there may be some other combination of something. And like I told you, once you buy one, you're going to buy 20, 30, 50, <laughs> 600, 1,000. Who knows, man, where it's going to end. You know, uh, you talk about storage. You might have to convert a whole room in your uh, house or your apartment into a safe to mm. hold everything. I mean, who knows, right? Right. Um, ready to pull triggers? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that time. <laughs> All right. Do your, uh, get your ear pro in. I'm going to get mine on here. I think we're going to switch spots. All right. Magazine goes in here, obviously. Push it until it clicks. All right. You're good there. All right. Cool. Uh, push this little lever down. That's going to make it ready. Yep. They look good. Now, your safety is here. And it's on either side, by the way. All right. But you'll flip that, and you're, you're hot. You're ready to go. So that uh, steel target down there right there just put it on that still target this is 22 we so can do the it plate. yeah that white one yeah all right boom Ooh right That was it. So, uh, now push this button. That's going to drop your magazine. Flip your safety here back on. And notice it locked everything back. Notice it locked the action back, right? Yes, sir. So that's what they call a bolt hold open. Not all firearms do this. So, sometimes you have to manually lock them back once you get done, too. That would be another safety step. Okay? Yes, so, sir. yeah, just keep that in mind. What do you think? Man, say... That one's fun. What? That one's fun. That one's fun. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, that one's fun. Man. Yeah. I don't know about home defense because it's 22, but right. that one's fun. All right. That's going to work the same way. All right. So you put that one in. Make sure you're going in the right way. And the right way is obviously that's going to be to the front. So smack that dude in there. All right. Now this one, what you're going to want to do is grab the slide just rack it. Boom. All right. Notice the hammer's back. Yes, sir. We are ready to shoot. So if you'll flip it over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, keep it down in range. This is your safety. Yes, sir. So if you weren't going to shoot it immediately, you could flip that safety up, right? Yes, sir. But for our purposes, we're fixing to uh, send rounds. So uh, look, down the, look down the barrel there, and you can shoot at that steel with these 22s again. Okay, you got three dots, right? Yes, sir. Line them up. And then put them on that steel. Oh, lift. Aim a little low. A little bit lower. Nope. Oh, come back up. <laughs> There you go. All right. And notice how we locked open. Yes, so if you'll flip it this way, right here is your mag release. 
Oh, yeah, it's got a little lip. There you go. You got it. You got it. You figured it out. Didn't even need me. So, what do you think about that one? I like it. Yeah. 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 Most definitely. So, the 1911, man, you can get these in a lot of different calibers, mm -hmm. first of all. Uh, they make them that are higher capacity than, than, this is what they call a single stack. Notice the 22s are in a single stack. Yes, sir. When we get down here, this is a double stack, meaning they... They stack like this. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get these in the double stack. A um, lot of different options. And uh, 1911s are popular for a lot of people. All right, hold that thing up. Now, this one's going to be different. It don't have dots in the back, but it does have the rear sight groove, right? Mm -hmm. So you can put this green in that groove, put it on the steel, basically the same way. A couple things about this one. Yes, sir. So this is what they call a double action revolver. Okay. Again, we were talking about actions earlier, right? Yes, sir. So your old cowboy revolvers, right? John Wayne, whatever. You had to pull the hammer back to make it fire, right? A double action, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can do it with the hammer back and then every time. Or you can just pull the trigger, right? right? And it'll fire. So what I want you to do is I want you to do both while you're shooting, right? Do a couple where you just pull the trigger mm -hmm. and then do a couple where you cock the hammer back and then pull the trigger. All right. So you kind of get a feel for the difference. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's important to say you got to take your finger off your trigger, off the trigger when you cock it. Or not all the way, but just make sure it's not just not present on. There you go. The thing about this one, with well, a revolver, there's no way to tell, all right? It don't lock back. So what you're going to do is put, you'll push this forward. Push that forward and then push the cylinder out. There you go. Now tilt it up. Put the gun up. Now smack this down. Push that down. There you go. Oh, and there you go. With a revolver, you, did you notice the difference between the double action and then how the trigger was better when you cocked the hammer first? Yes, sir. Yeah. In double action, the trigger is turning the cylinder and moving the hammer back right. at the same time and they make magazine loaders for pretty much everything nowadays which mm -hmm. can make it a little easier to load stuff of course once you get used to it you're doing fine all right slam your magazine in there same way as that 1911 just uh, rack that slide just slingshot it there you go all right now hammer's back just like that 1911 right mm -hmm. Here's your safety. If if you was wanting to use it, there's your safety, right? Yes, sir. All right. With this one, just shoot at that mattress or something down there. All right. <laughs> don't shoot. Don't shoot the steel. All right. Uh, but put the red dot. Yeah, we're a little close. Put the red dot. Just aim at that mattress or something down there. You'll be fine. All right. A little more jump than that twenty-two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, and like the 1911, same way, flip it, mag buttons on the other way, mag buttons there, you lock back, everything's cool. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely had a little more pop to it. Yeah. I like it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one right here, it shoots phenomenal. Uh, this is the one, the event, the, I told you I was at, that the, the one went down on me, gave me trouble. Yes, sir. Uh, this was, this one wasn't the one that went down, but this was the bell of the ball. Hey, people loved this one at that event. Oh, my God, they loved it. So far, we've shot a couple 1911s that had those manual safeties, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason for that is that these are hammer-fired, right? So that's a hammer, obviously, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't explain that to you, but that's what <laughs> that is. So these are hammer-fired. 
well with a with this one you notice it has no hammer this is what they call a striker fire so rather than having that hammer it's got a pin in here that basically a spring on the firing pin that moves this way it's a striker it strikes instead of a hammer so because of that it's got no manual safeties right this little thing right here's a safety so when you pull the trigger you got to pull you know push this down to pull the trigger mm -hmm. so that's a safety feature and it's got some internally built uh safety features as well all right put that dude in there slam it up in there until it locks yeah you're yeah. probably good slingshot the slide or rack that thing back and again you got no safety so look through that window and that's a big round thing with a circle so it's a lot different mm -hmm. oh yeah feels good yes sir it does. it's a phenomenal handgun man what type of gun is this <laughs> Uh, same way mag release your mag release is almost always going to be in the same spot all right, uh, yeah, except all right. for in some very special circumstances all right oh, this one's going to be a little heavier but oh, yeah. it's a rifle so it's going to be but uh, jam that mag up in there oh it goes up here you got used to the handguns mm -hmm. <laughs> yes sir so, yeah don't be don't worry about being timid with the magazine all right flip this thing over because we got, you can do one of two things. You can take this and pull this lever back and let it go. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can just smack this right here down. So I can do it like that? Yeah. Oh, and sorry. it's loaded. It's loaded. Now flip it back the other way. Your safety is over here. All right. It's right here. So you got to flip that down and you're ready to rock. Okay. Again, just go down there for that mattress, somewhere on that mattress or whatever. Notice it like the rest, it locked back. So your mag release is right here. It's actually on both sides. And that one is uh Man. so what do you think? I like it. Nine millimeter, but in a rifle, right? Right. Pretty like it's, it's not much recoil to it's it like not I not much it. at all. It's not much more than that, is it? Uh -uh. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. sir. Yep. So Man. now we go with the AR that's the real deal. <laughs> so let's get it. They don't slide in, they just push in. So put that back here and just go clip. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, this what's up, man. I'm curious now what you think, because they, they talk about this being such a war machine and, and all this other stuff and the power and all this, right? I'm curious what you think between the nine millimeter mm -hmm. and the big powerful if, if there really is that much of a difference it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what you what you think but uh loads up magazine same way it's a bigger magazine obviously but slam that dude in there so don't be shy about it uh okay flip it back over you're gonna drop the bolt the same way and push that all right safety's in the same spot gotta flip it off and you're ready to rock man it's gonna be a little louder It'll be a lot louder. <laughs> if you don't hit them with that one, you scare them to death with the noise for sure. <laughs> uh, magazine is right here. All right. What do you think? It is not that much of a difference. It's not, is it? It's, is it's, it? it's damn near the same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from yeah. my from my perspective it's, it's louder it's way louder yeah most definitely louder but as far as just the recoil felt and all of that yeah yeah definitely absolutely feel like the same speaking of recoil now we get crazy with some shotguns <laughs> yeah i'm definitely gonna be coming to her more all right now you that one up so just keep tra track of this right here because so what you want to do is pick this up yes sir so you want to come down here uh and Push this in and then pump it. Don't be shy. No, push, oh. no, no, no. Push this in. Mm -hmm. Your finger off the trigger for now, though. Yes, sir. Well, hold that down. Hold it down yes, while sir. you pump it. 
There you go. Okay. You ready to go? Oh, yeah. Come up a little higher. It's going to be a little more comfortable if you get higher. There you go. All right. Now you got to pump it again. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. One more time. <laughs> pump it one more time. That'll clear it out. <laughs> Leave it back. Go ahead and pump it one more time. Pump it one more time? No, come on back. Don't pull the trigger. Just pull, pump it back. Oh. There you go. You're out. There's only three. All right. So what do you think about that one? Yeah, that devil definitely it, got some kick to it. It thumped a little bit. Yeah. A little, a little yeah. soft for sure. But that's about the worst that it gets, honestly, with with firearms. I mean, that's a 12 gauge shotgun, right? Yeah. All right. Now, flip it over. Remember, our safety's on, so we got to flip that off now. So flip that off, and you're ready to rock, man. Just pull <laughs> the trigger three times, and you're good. And of course, it locked back like it should, and mm -hmm. everything was good. So, man, yeah, yeah, you definitely right. I'm, I'm definitely gonna indulge in some guns <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, so oh, yeah. what do you think overall? I like it. I like it, and I I definitely feel more confident now. And I know I'm I'm gonna be trying to come out here as much as I can. Too. Yeah, it's just a matter of man. It's just a matter. Of, like I grew up around it. I, I joke about you know like. My mama had a hard time giving birth because I come out holding this dude right here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, there's literally pictures of me in front of gun racks and stuff like that. I couldn't have been no more than two years old, probably. So I've been around it my entire life, right? And other people hadn't. And, and, and I get it. If you haven't been around it, it's intimidating. It can be intimidating, especially a lot of stuff you hear on the news and you got, you know, mm -hmm. good Lord, social media and everything else. It's like, but how much fun did you have? A lot of fun. And we ain't done. We'll, we'll, we'll shoot some more probably. But, you know, how much fun did you have? Come on. Man. I had a lot of fun. I ain't going to start to you. I had to get the jitters out. But then once I got the jitters out, just stopped being nervous and yeah. was calm. Oh, yeah. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. Most definitely. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what would you think the funnest one was that you shot today? Man. Yeah. All right. For some reason, I'm I'm messing with this one. That was like, awesome. Like, like, man. That was new to me. I've had that one in like a little uh, over a week now. And that one is fun. And, and for a person to fun. For a person like me not knowing much about guns, and I'm thinking like this is going to come with the, you know. Yeah. And yeah well, that's why I put you on that one first. Because yeah. first of all, it's fun. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, it's such a pussycat. Like it doesn't hurt <laughs> at all, man. It's just so smooth. Like, it's awesome, you know? Yes, sir. Now, oh, yeah. as far as uh, defensive, is there anything that you're thinking in front of home or whatever? This one here, maybe? Yes. Yes, definitely a handgun for sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. Did Which, out of the two, this one or this one, which one do you think? It's like, nah, I don't know. I kind of like that one more. I like this one more. Probably that one? Definitely. Yeah. Does yes, it feel better to you or what? Yes, sir. Yeah. To me, to me, it felt better. Yeah. And to me, it's just like on the like just the way I was having it in my hand and the way it was just firing. To me, it yeah. just felt good. It yeah. felt like I should be getting it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of agree. One of the things I really like about this one is it's what they call stippling. But see the textures here. See how that is comes down like this, mm -hmm. and it's the same way with the 1911. See how that's flat. But then see how this has that undercut right there where that finger gets in there all nice and, and pretty and it just it just feels good. Mm -hmm. So uh I wouldn't disagree with you. Yeah. Um which one surprised you the most? Is there one that surprised you the most? Man. I ain't gonna stun to you. <laughs> like it's it's so much to me, it's so much to choose from because I'm not used to shooting yeah. guns, so it's like, man. Yeah. These two surprised me for so sure, for so sure, just because it's like I'm not used to shooting guns, but when I got to shooting them for this, for like for instance, on this one, it had a nice grip to it, so I was like, I can definitely fool with it. And this yeah. one just surprised me just because, like, I'm thinking it's gonna have a lot of power, <laughs> it didn't have no power to it, so I'm like, yeah, I can definitely, you know, yeah. do my thing in this, yeah, yeah, and those down there, man, say, right, I never shot one before, so. Me hearing about shooting it and then just looking through a scope, 
I never really, I, I haven't shot a gun, period, as far as like looking through a scope and then having it. I'm used to people saying, oh, that yeah. AR 15, this and that. Yeah. And so for me, shooting, yes, yeah, I, well, I see what I see what the thing is about. You know, people love those. Yeah. Well, just to, just like, um, you know, just like talking about the different actions and talking about the different bullets and calibers. I mean, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot that you can get into if you want to. And it's the same way. I, I didn't really critique you or mess with you much with your grip or how you were holding anything. Like, as long as you're safe, you know, and all that good kind of stuff, like, let let you pull triggers and, and kind of experience it. That's where the, the, the comeback to it, getting your own firearms, getting out to the range, practice. You know, you'll get better and better. I did move the shotgun up on your shoulder a little bit when I seen that because I didn't want it to hurt you. Yes, sir. But the other stuff wasn't, you wasn't going to, mm -mm, oh, you no. wasn't going to get hurt or anything. Mm -mm. But with a shotgun, you get that in the wrong place and it catch <laughs> that little nerve in your armpit or something. Mm -hmm. It can sting a little bit, you know, because it's got a thump to it. It's, oh, a, yeah. it's a shotgun. Most right? definitely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things, man, that, that I think you got to look forward to and, and, uh, and, and moving forward. And again, you, you're welcome back. Anytime, Curtis, man. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.